Hey again, YouTube. Welcome back to the basement. We've got a little different kind of project today. We're going to be working on one of these. This is uh, an ECU from a mid-90s Toyota uh, 4Runner, I think this is what's going into. A uh, buddy of mine at work, he's uh, he's got a pile of 4Runners, and, and this came out of a junkyard. It already had keys learned to it, so um, in order to learn new keys, so the vehicle doesn't think it's getting stolen, you typically have to go to a dealer, pay them a lot of money, all that other good stuff. Or, you can reprogram the EEPROM on here back to factory defaults and, and get them going again. So, um, there's this one itty bitty little chip there. Pan over to a better camera in a second, but that's our, our victim today. We gotta pull him off the board, we're gonna tack him onto this adapter, put him in a programmer, and, uh, and we'll get him flashed back to, uh, back to default so we can relearn new keys in this Toyota. Um, there, I, I've read some other ways to do this online, which I tried already, and that's why there's uh, already wires tacked onto this thing, but uh, you, in theory, you should be able to program this on the board, but when you power the chip, there's other circuits on here, several oscillators, other EEPROMs, the processor itself, and when they fire up, it seems to put noise onto the, the data bus, and I was getting very weird results uh, reading and, and reprogramming the EEPROM, like checksums never wanted to match. Every now and again they would, but wasn't the checksum I was looking for, so it didn't help. So uh, I've already done one of these where I removed the chip, programmed it, put it back in. My buddy put it in one of his forerunners, and it works great. So I know the process is sound. It would be nice not to have to remove the chip from the board, but I think uh, in, in order to make sure we get exactly what we want on that EEPROM, we should probably go that route. So, uh... Here's our victim zoomed in a little bit. Kind of center him on the screen there. And uh, should uh, should be fairly straightforward. Just uh, heat it up, pull it off, put it on this other little module, and uh, and put him in the, uh, in the programmer. So this is just an adapter. There's no actives on here. It's just some traces on a circuit board to get it to plug into some pins, right? So uh, this is a YFT266. I'll, uh, I'll try to put everything I'm, I'm using today in, in the uh, comments below so you can go out and find what you need. And uh, like I said, I've done this once before, so these pads are already have a little bit of tin on them, but we'll re-tin them and, and get the chip all situated on there. Um, first things first, we gotta got to get the chip off. So I'm going to use a... Uh, where'd the camera go? Uh, a very fine tip iron to... Uh, get the the uh, old wire is playing with off of there and we'll kind of reflow all these real quick and there is fresh solder on them already but uh, you might want to flow a little bit on there if you're uh, you know dealing with a, a board that's never been reworked before just to to help get the chip off and then we'll uh, we'll use a little bit of hot air It'll take a minute to get heated up. I'm running the iron and hot air about 380 degrees Celsius. It's uh, what about 750 Fahrenheit, I guess. And uh, I was able to do that last time without damaging the board or the chip. So uh, I think that's good enough. Get a little heat on there and just kind of roll it around. Start to see the flux bubble, you know you're getting close. And when this thing's ready to come off, he should lift off very easily. Do not force this. These itty bitty little traces, if you pull one of those up, it's all over for you. All about being patient. He's starting to wiggle on that side. There he goes. And this board is covered in some kind of lacquer. That's why it's all shiny and all that in there. That's uh, that's to prevent corrosion because you know these are going to be in in trucks that go off road and whatever else. So uh, 
I think they did a pretty good job building this. It's a pretty stout little little computer. So now to get him tacked onto the board, this is where it starts getting a little fiddly. I'll use this, uh, this breadboard here to hold this in place for me. Just so we're not chasing the board all over the, the bench. We got our hot little chip. And got to make sure pin one goes to pin one. Let's see if we can see it on the camera. Nah, it's hard to see with all the lacquer on the chip, but there is this tiny little indentation little dot there you can kind of see that tells you where pin one is and this board is labeled nicely just kind of set the chip in place and hopefully with uh, whatever little bit of solder is left from the last time I did this it's enough to uh, flow the chip on there yep, just enough to to hold it where you know this doesn't have to uh, stand the test of time it's just going to be on there for a couple of minutes and we got to pull it right back off anyway so i just want to make sure there's there's just enough there to make electrical contact again we'll heat one side heat the other side and then just kind of go around and around and once we get one leg to stick we can use the iron with the fine point just to make sure the rest of them are on there. That's what I get for not being careful. for a minute and uh, make sure at least one or two legs stuck and then we can go around with the iron and check everything else. It looks like he's on there pretty good. Just to be on the safe side we'll just tap each leg Just scrape kind of in towards the leg on the pad there, very gently, just to get whatever little solder was on there, making a good contact for us. Give him a little check. I think it appears to have made contact, so we'll, uh, we'll zoom out a little bit here. See how this fancy zoom camera goes. And uh, this is the programmer we'll be using, the uh, uh, TL-866 Plus or Pro or uh, the 2 Plus. That's what he is. There's cheaper programmers you can use for doing these, these little 8-pin chips. Um, and uh, uh, my buddy Kevin bought one, uh, but this thing's already wired up to my computer, drivers installed, all that stuff, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to bother learning how to use a new programmer. We know this guy is tried and true and never let me stranded, so we'll uh, go ahead and pop this guy out of the board and into the programmer. 
So can you see the programmer? Yeah, he almost reaches. So programmer also tells you where pin one is, right? You know, the IC goes that way, the little notch at pin one, the little divot at pin one. So uh, the board is so nicely labeled that pin one is that way. So we'll uh, go ahead and pop them in there. And now onto the programming. I've got our chip all sweated onto the board. It looks good. And we'll uh, come into our XG Pro software. We choose our IC, which is the Fairchild 93C56. It's an eight pin. So it's a small form factor, you know, small, uh, small outline integrated circuit eight, you know, eight pin surface mount chip. We're gonna put it into uh, eight bits mode here for uh, for the editing that we have to do, and and uh, actually I have a file saved for this, so here we can uh, load the file. It's only a couple of bytes you have to add into this EEPROM, and uh, right here on the fourth row, uh, FBDF for bytes A and B, and then uh, directly below it on the uh, Bravo Zero row you have uh, five alpha sixty nine. Um, somebody else had, had done this with a different kind of programmer on a, on a similar car. That's where I found this in uh, uh, Googling around the internet. But uh, basically, this just tells the ECU, you are brand new. It doesn't have any stored data in here from the other keys. And uh, it basically will blank the ECU. So the next time you, you turn the, the vehicle on... I, I forget the exact procedure. It's, it's all over the internet, though. You... Uh, now you gotta like hold a button while you turn the key on, let it sit for a couple of seconds, something will flash on the dash, and then you put in your new key, and it will learn that key to this ECU. So with that, we will program. Verify successful. So there we are. Let's, uh, let's read it back anyway, just to be sure. Yep, there we are, FBDF 5A69. That's all that needs to be on this chip, so we're done with that. Now comes the fun part of very carefully taking the chip off the board and getting it back onto the ECU. There we go, that one. Get our little breadboard back. Stick this in there so it doesn't wander around too bad on us. And let's see how much of this we can just kind of run away from the chip, just kind of scrape some of it off so it'll desolder a little easier so we're not just blasting the chip with a heat gun for too long. little bit off anyway. These chips are tougher than they look. They will take a fair amount of heat. But still, you don't want to stress them any more than you have to. Start to move. There he goes. all that goo holding them onto the pick. And with our board back in front of us, let's clean up the pads a little bit. Try to make them as smooth and level as possible. That will make it a lot easier to get the chip sitting where you're supposed to.
So a little bit of tin on the pad, a little bit of tin on the board. If I was smart, I would go get the little tweezers I have, but they're upstairs and I'm lazy. There we go. He looks looks like he's in the right place on all the pads. We'll get him heated up again, make sure he's he's at least tacked down on a couple legs, and then we'll use the, the real fine point iron and give him another little coat on each pin just to make sure this thing doesn't go anywhere when Kevin goes off-roading. So he looks pretty good. I bet he's stuck there. Yeah, he ain't going anywhere. But just because we can, let's make sure those pins are all flowed really well. That's that. I'd say we have ourselves a winner there. I don't see any solder bridges. Oh. Just kind of checking my work against the other chip on the board. say my job is perfect but I think it'll roll so yeah that's all you got to do to uh, reflash your ECU back to factory default so don't be afraid to buy a computer from the junkyard to put in a vehicle you're putting back together don't pay the crackhead prices at the dealer so uh, I think we're done for the day we'll give this back to Kevin have him give it a shot and uh, well if it's if it doesn't work You'll see another video. It'll be back on the bench. Take care, everybody.